الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد ليعطه منشن رحمه الله تعالى باب لا يقال السلام على الله باب لا يقال السلام على الله The chapter with regards to the issue that one he will not say Assalamu ala Allah He will not give Give salam to To Allah He will not give salam to Allah And he's saying Assalamu uh, Assalamu ala Allah Again the author Rahimahullah ta'ala He's continuing with the chapters That are related to having manners With regards to the terms the chapters that are related to having proper manners with regards to the terms and the words uh, that one he will use. And from that is the issue of saying, As-salamu ala Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is As-salam. Allah azza wa jal, He is As-salam. Wa minhu As-salam. Allah, He is the one that is As-salam. This is from the beautiful names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As-salam. And he is the one who gives a salam to whom he wills from, uh, from his creation, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is from the beautiful names of Allah Azza wa Jal. So the one who himself is salam, it's not said as salam to him. He is the one who he himself is salam. And he is the one who provides and gives salam to whom he wills. And this beautiful name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is one of those names that... Uh, is related to all of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it has the meaning of as-salama as-salama wal-khulus min al-naqais wal-uyub as-salama means to have as-salama as-salama is a master bimana as-salama was-salama hiya al-najatu wal-khulus min al-shurur wal-uyub wal-naqais so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is as-salam, meaning that He is salimun min kulli naqsin wa'ib. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning that Allah azza wa jal, He is free from having any defect or deficiency. This is the meaning of as-salam. He is free from having any weakness or any deficiency or any defect in any aspect whatsoever. So therefore His life is perfect and His life has as-salama from every deficiency. No weakness in his life and his existence and his essence whatsoever. No deficiency. He's free from that and safe from that. He's far from that. Uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He doesn't get tired. He doesn't get sleepy. He doesn't get tired. He doesn't get sleepy. He doesn't wear out. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, his knowledge is safe. His knowledge is free from having any defect. He's not ever exposed to forgetfulness or to heedlessness or to not knowing something before knowing. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, rather his knowledge is perfect and complete. And likewise his wisdom, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and his mercy and his kindness and that he gives, he gives uh, out of his grace and out of his mercy and out of his bounty, not because he needs anything from the creation, He's free from needing anything in the creation. His life is, ha, has a salama min kulli wajh, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And likewise, his deen is safe from any uh, injustice and his laws and his legislation and his rulings are safe from, from any injustice or from any lies or dishonesty, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is one of those names that is uh, included or understood and he is a description of all of the other names. All of his attributes, they are free from defects. They are free from deficiency. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah, He is as salam He is the one who has uh, perfection in all of His names and all of His attributes. And He is the one who is free from all deficiencies from every aspect. So therefore, one, He will not say as salam wa ala Allah. Because He is as salam Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise, Allah as salam He is the one who gives the salam And He is the one who gives safety and security, and he's the one who gives peace, and he is the one who uh, frees the people from uh, deficiency and defects and from hardships and the likes like this. All of this comes from Allah. Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam. 
as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would say at the end uh, of the obligatory prayers. At the end of the obligatory prayers. So the, the salam or salama is uh, sought from Allah, not for Allah. As salama, having safety and security and having peace and being free from hardship and difficulty and being free from defects and shortcomings and faults, all of this is sought from Allah, not for Allah. All of this is sought from Allah. Allah, a person, he will ask this from Allah, not for Allah. Allah, he is already free of all of these affairs. Allah, he is the one who provides this. So he is the one who is called on and no one will call uh, for him. And he, he's the one who is supplicated to, not for. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Huwa al-mad'u, laysa al-mad'u wa lahu. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. We understand that. Asking salam, giving salam, this is actually a supplication. So therefore Allah, He is the one that we supplicate to, not the one that we supplicate for. So in uh, saying as-salamu ala, uh, as-salamu ala Allah, this could be understood from that, that uh, Allah, He is in need of His slaves to, uh, to free Him from deficiency, or to free Him from, uh, from a- a- any, uh, uh, any shortcomings and the likes like this, or that Allah is in need of His slaves uh, to make dua for him and to supplicate for him. And all of this is incorrect. And all of this is incorrect. And from the wisdom of not saying, As-salamu ala Allah, that one he will not say, As-salamu ala Allah. All to be understood from that. And he's saying that, that Allah, he's exposed to evil, or he's exposed to deficiency, or that Allah, he's exposed to shortcomings. So therefore we say, As-salamu ala Allah. And he uh, making dua that he will be safe from that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's already safe from that and free from that. He does not need uh, uh, us to supplicate. Rather, he is the one who was supplicated to, not for. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So even if a person said, well, he did not intend that, meaning again, this is the same issue. Regardless if a person intended that or not, this is not permissible because this is what the, the meaning uh, contains and necessitates. So if a person intended it, then the issue would be even more severe, would be even more severe. So in order to avoid the likes of these affairs and to have noble manners and conduct with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the completion and the perfection of the faith and the tawheed is that a believer he will have the proper statements and terms and he will check himself with his tongue and he will use uh, the good etiquettes and manners whenever he speaks about the affairs that uh, have a relationship with creed and aqidah. So the author he says, وَفِي الصَّحِيحِ أَنْ إِبْنِ مَسْعُودٍ وفي الصحيح عن ابن مسعود رضي الله عنه أنه قال كنا إذا كنا مع النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في الصلاة قلنا السلام على الله من عباده السلام على فلان فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لا تقول السلام على الله فإن الله هو السلام So the author he mentioned in الصحيح meaning here in, in صحيح البخاري وصحيح مسلم from the hadith of Ibn Mas'ud and radiallahu anhu that he said before whenever we used to be in the prayer with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we would say As-salamu ala Allah min ibadihi As-salamu ala fulan We would say uh, we, we would say As-salam to Allah from his slaves and then we would say As-salam on so and so and As-salam on so and so and in this uh, narration has been narrated with regards to at tashahud with regards to at tashahud and in some wordings, Yani clarifying is the tashahud al akhir, al akhir that before the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam taught them the proper tahiyya, that they would say this: Assalamu ala Allah, Assalamu ala Jibrail, Assalamu ala Mikail, Assalamu ala Fulan, wa Fulan. They would say it like this: Assalam for Allah, Assalam for Jibril, Assalam for Mikail, Assalam, for so-and-so, and so-and-so. And they would name individuals by their names. They would name individuals they know, and by their names, sending salam to them in this manner. Sending salam to them in this manner. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he found out about this, and he said, do not say as-salamu ala Allah. Do not give salam to Allah. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ salam. And he clarified the wisdom behind that and the reason for that prohibition. And that is Allah, he is as-salam. And that is Allah, He is, He is as salam. So therefore, you don't give salam to salam. Rather, salam, He is the one. As salam, He is the one who provides the salam. And He gives the salam to whom He wills. 
So a salam is sought from a salam, subhanahu wa ta'ala. A salam is sought from him, tabaraka wa ta'ala. Is sought from him, not for him. Is sought from him, not, not, uh, not for him. So the salam here, with regards to the tahiyyah, this is uh, the issue that it occurred in. That they would give uh, a salam to individuals. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught them a wording that uh, would be, all, be inclusive and would include all of those individuals and more whom they were giving salam to. And he first, the prohibition of giving the salam to Allah. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he, he, he mentioned that the salam should only be for one person specifically. And then the rest of mankind, uh, the salam will be for those righteous from them. For those righteous from them. As-salamu alayka ayyuhal nabi wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. As-salamu alayna wa ala ibadihi salihin So here in this statement, now that, Allah, that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam corrected their tahiyya by way of, there's only one, there's only one individual who has a specific salam. is given salam to specifically and that is the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then everyone else, the salam is given to them by description. And they will be included in the description. Every righteous and obedient slave. Wassalamu alayna wa ala ibadihi as salihin. And may the salam be upon us. And they're all of the righteous slaves of Allah Azza wa Jal. So this was the correction of that. This was the correction of that. So one he will not give in the tahiyyah the salam to Allah first and foremost. Because Allah, He is a salam. And then likewise, He will not give salam to individuals, rather only to one individual. And that is the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then the, the, those after that will be given based upon the description of righteousness. Based upon the description of righteousness. So here the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, He prohibited them from that which was incorrect. And then He taught them the, the, the proper way. And then He taught them the proper way. Also, a salam, it has another meaning. And that is yani, in, the, in the greetings. And that is in the greetings. As-salamu alaykum. The greetings of, of the believers. As-salamu alayka. In this manner. And this is a type of tahiyyah. And in the meaning, in this meaning is inclusive. It has a number of aspects. From that is that one over one he says, As-salamu alayka. What he intends by that? Uhayyika bi. Bis-salam. And I greet you with peace. That's the meaning. That's one of the meanings that is included there. I'm greeting you with peace. I'm greeting you with peace. And likewise, it has the meaning of alaykum barakatu ismillahi as salam. Assalamu alaykum. Meaning, I'm asking Allah to put His blessing uh, on you and to bless you and to give you His blessing by mentioning His name as salam. We have seen that this is one of those blessed names that is inclusive and it is an attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is referring. Uh, or is included in all of and all of his names and attributes. They're all safe and they're all free from any defect, meaning any, any defect whatsoever. All of his names and attributes are free from that. And likewise, his actions, subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is blessed. Tabaraka wa ta'ala. So therefore, when you say assalamu alaykum, is as if you're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to put his salam in peace and his blessing uh, upon, upon the individual, upon the individual. And likewise, uh, it has another meaning as well. And this one is important. Is that, that is whenever one meets uh, another believer and he says to them, As-salamu alaykum ka'annuhu yukbiruhu annuhu salamu min sharrihi. Annuhu sayyaslamu min sharrihi. Whenever a person, he comes and he says, As-salamu alaykum. Then, then it's as if he's telling you that you don't have to worry from me. I'm not going to harm you. You have nothing but peace and safety and security coming from me. You have nothing but safe. You're free from any harm, any coming from my direction. Assalamu alaikum. And this meaning like this. And this is very important because sometimes some people, they'll come and they'll give salam to their brother and then they'll harm them. And he right there in their face by lying to them or lying about them or taking their, their knowledge and spreading it and carrying tales or by robbing them or cheating them or deceiving them. Assalamu alaikum. How much is this? And he'll lie to him and cheat to him. Oh, it's brand new. I paid this much for it. Like this, and the likes like this, and he's not safe from him. But he gave him the salam. So whenever when he gives the salam, it's like he's telling his brother, "Don't worry, you don't have to, you don't have to worry from me. I'm bringing you nothing but peace. You you will find from from my avenue and from from me nothing but safety and peace 
and nothing but goodness and you're free from any harm or any uh, any deception coming from my avenue and my aspect. And this is from that meaning likewise. And this is from that meaning likewise. So this is a beautiful supplication. And uh, and the one who does not The Prophet وسلم, he said the one who comes to you he doesn't begin with salam, they don't respond to him. If somebody came to you and said let me see this or let me have that or can I have this or can I have that you, you don't even respond to him. You don't even respond to him, or you remind him. You say, "Assalamu alaikum." Give salam, ya akhi. Barakallah fiq. So the first thing you do, you don't say, uh, "Barakallah fiq" or "Hayak Allah." And the light side is the first thing you say when you meet a, a believer, "Assalamu alaikum." And then after that, if you want to say some other beneficial words, "Alhamdulillah," or supplicate for him, but that which comes first is "Assalam." And this is an honor and respect to be from the people uh, of this ta- of this tahiyya. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is as salam and He gives salam. Salam, salam, and qawlan min rabbin rahim. This is an indication that the people of Jannah, Allah, He give them salam. That Allah, He give them salam. Salam ala al mursaleen. Allah, Azza wa Jalla, He gives salam to, to the mursaleen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gave salam to Khadija. Allah, 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 Akbar. Allah, Akbar. So the, Allah, He gives salam to whom He wills from His slave. Salamu ala ibadihi ladina astafa. So the Allah, He's the one who gives salam. And the home in the hereafter, in the, in, the, in the paradise, it is called Dar, Dar as Salam. Dar as Salam, because also the Jannah is safe and free from any foul or bad way, any deficiency. There's no, there's no deficiency, there's no uh, filth, there's nothing bad, it's all good. It's all good in paradise. Everything is good in Jannah. There, there's nothing that, that's bad or, or considered not nice or not good. There's no hardship. There's no harm. There's no lying. There's no cheating. There's no deception. There's no worry. There's no grief. There's no pain. There, there's nothing but pleasure and goodness. Dar this, salam this, this home of paradise is free. It's free from every foul and bad way. It's a place of perfection and beauty and peace and happiness. And it's the home of a salam the, the home of a salam that he has created for his righteous and believing slaves. So likewise, the means to enter the home of a salam, uh, one he must spread the salam. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, uh, لَن and, the, and the, they said, "Bala ya Rasulullah." So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, "Ushu salam a bainakum." Ushu salam a bainakum. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, "You'll never enter paradise until you believe, and you'll never uh, believe until you love one another." And you'll uh, should I indicate or lead you to to do something, lead you to something that if you do, you'll love one another. And they said, of course, O Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so he said to them, then spread the salam amongst yourself. Spread the salam amongst yourself. So this is a, a beautiful way. And from the means of, of, of loving one another, and from the signs of the end of times, is that a person, he will only give salam to those people whom he knows. And the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned that is uh, that one he will yusallimu ala man ya'rifu ala man la ya'rif. And to sallima ala man ta'rifa. That you give salam to the one you, you know and that you one you don't know. So long as the person has a, the slightest indication that he is a Muslim, whenever you see him, you give him salam. Whenever you see him, you give him salam. This is the case here. You wouldn't say, oh, I don't know him, so I'm not giving him salam. No, this is a foul way, an indication of arrogance and pride. And this is a sign of the end days. And this is contrary to what the Prophet wasallam has ordered. Has ordered. So anytime... Uh, a person he sees a Muslim, uh, then uh, they greet each other with salam. Then they greet each other with salam, even if he doesn't know them, even if he doesn't know them. So this was, this is the case, and this is the means to bring about love in in the hearts of, of the believers, and also to remove, yani the the hard feelings or the distance that that's between the hearts by giving salam, especially to those people you do not know especially to those people that, that you do not know, at least they know that they're safe from you and they know that you're their Muslim brother and, and the likes like this. So this is something 
يعني to to keep in mind the point here is that we do not say assalamu ala Allah we do not say assalam ala Allah and the reasons have have proceeded so the author he says فيه مسائل in this chapter there are issues الأولى تفسير السلام تفسير السلام the interpretation of السلام that has preceded that it's a, a, a greetings it's a greetings and likewise it's a supplication it's a greetings and a supplication so therefore it's not suitable for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's not suitable to come from the slave for Allah rather he will supplicate to Allah for the salam he will not supplicate for Allah for salam because Allah he is a salam the second one is that it is the greetings and the greetings of salam and the greetings of uh, security and safety and the greetings of peace and the greetings uh, uh, of hoping good and well-being for the one that you greet. The third benefit here is that it's not proper for Allah to give a salam to Allah. Rather, you ask a salam from Allah. Because Allah, He is a salam. The fifth uh, issue here is that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught them the proper greetings that is proper for Allah. The proper greetings that is correct. And he, so therefore a person, he will not uh, reprimand the people or prohibit the people from wrong without teaching them that which is right. And this is a benefit that we learn here. So a person, if he stops somebody or if he corrects somebody, along with that, and he, in the correction, prohibiting them from that which is wrong, or prohibiting them from that which is not allowed, or prohibiting them from that which is bad, along with that prohibition, it's from wisdom and proper education and teaching and cultivation that he will also teach him the right way. He will also teach him the right way. For example, if a person were going to prohibit a child from playing a particular game, he would tell him that this game here is haram, and he would mention why. That it contains this and this and this. And then he can direct him to a game that's allowed. Then direct him to a game that's allowed. We can, if the child wants to purchase this one or that one, he can clear this, this item or that item, this clothes or that clothes. We can tell him, and, and it's haram or not allowed. You tell him this one is haram and not allowed. And you tell him why, the reason. Where's the prohibition with regards to this particular garment? The faces are on it, for example, or something like that. Whatever the case may be. And then you direct them, these are all halal here. And you show them like that. Or if you stop somebody from praying wrong, or from making wudu wrong, we don't say that's wrong. And then leave them like that. You say, no, that's wrong. And then you show them the right way. And you show them the right way. So this is the case here. And we learn from this way of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That he, taught, he told them that what they were doing was incorrect. And then he directed them to the correct way. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this likewise is the way of a believer in cultivating himself and his family and dealing with his brothers and society. After this, the author, he says, Babu qawli, Allahumma, Allahumma fili in shi'ta. Now the author, he mentioned the chapter with regards to the statement of saying, Oh Allah, forgive me if you will. Forgive me if you will. And he forgive me if you will or if you want like, like this. This is the meaning. Ikhili and shitta. Oh Allah, if you want to, oh Allah, if you will, forgive me. So again, uh, this is from uh, those statements that a believer he will avoid, and he will not say them. And it's from the perfection and the completion of faith that whenever a person he asks Allah for something like forgiveness, that he will say it with certainty, believing that Allah he. He can hear him and believing that Allah is aware of his situation and believing that Allah is powerful in the ability to do all things and is generous and kind and will provide him for that which he asks for. Whether he's asking for forgiveness or for mercy or for wealth or for a wife or for a child or for knowledge or for benefit or for rectification, whatever he's asking for from this life and the hereafter, a believer, he must be certain that Allah hears him. And he must be certain that Allah will respond to him. And he must be certain and have no doubt that Allah is powerful and strong and has the ability to give him what he likes and what he asks for. So he will not have any hesitation, hesitation in his supplication. He will not have any doubt or any taraddud going back and forth in, in the lives like this in, in his supplication. So rather from the completion of the faith and the perfection of the tawheed is to call on Allah with certainty, with certain faith and certain belief. With certain faith and certain 
belief. The Prophet said, Udu Allaha wa antu muqinuna bil ijaba. Call on Allah, supplicate to Allah while you have certainty that He will respond to you. وَعَلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَسْتَجِيبُ دُعَاءً مِنْ قَالْبٍ غَافِلٍ لَا And that you should know that Allah, He doesn't accept the supplication from a heart that is heedless and, and preoccupied. From a heart that is heedless and preoccupied. Somebody, maybe he'll say a beautiful dua that he memorized from the Qur'an, but his heart is not present. His heart is thinking about something else, or he's not focused on that affair. Or in the life like this, he must gather his, his heart at the time of supplication, and put his faith and trust and reliance upon Allah and call on him with sincere hope and, and faith in Allah and knowing that Allah, he will respond and believing that Allah, he will respond. I just remember now, a brother, he told me uh, a few weeks ago that uh, his mother was sick in another country and that the doctors had said she will not live. She's very old. And then the brother, he said, no, Allah is going to cure my mother. And then he had certainty. He had true, he had certain faith. He said, no, no. He told the doctor, no, we're going to make dua. We're going to call on Allah. The doctor said, no, your mother's not going to make it. He said, no, we're going to make dua. He said, I went to all my family members and I told them, all of them, don't listen to them, just make dua. Give charity. Give charity. The Prophet wasallam said, if you give charity, Allah will cure you. Yeah, you're, 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 you're sick. So they all started giving charity and their brother, his his hope was very high and he had certainty Allah would cure he said wallahi the, his mother is cured <laughs> his mother is cured Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar so one time sometimes the doctors they'll say one thing and then I mean, the faith of a believer will prove them wrong Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah so the point is yani, that you call on Allah with certainty and you have strong hope and if Allah responds then this is from his blessing and favor and if he doesn't give you what you ask for, if you are sincere, then he still responds to you. And he provides for you and, and, and many other manners, subhanahu wa ta'ala, either in this life or in the hereafter by removing harm from you or providing something better for you in place of that uh, or giving you uh, something better on the, on the day of resurrection. Sometimes we may supplicate for something and we, when we want that thing, but it's not good for us had we obtained it. Sometimes we will strive in supplication for something and we hope that we would have that, but in reality, uh, maybe it's not good for us and Allah knows best. And for this reason, sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not give us exactly what we ask for in that manner based upon the wisdom that he has to baraka wa ta'ala. So the point is here, you do not say, Allahumma li in shi'ta. Oh Allah, forgive me if you will, if you want to. Oh, oh Allah, uh, provide me this if you want to. Oh, oh Allah, give me a wife if you want to, if you will, in shitta. Like this, we don't say like this. We don't say, oh, oh Allah, provide me for a child like, like this, in shitta. Uh, Insha'Allah. La, you don't put, you don't attach uh, the supplication to, to the will of Allah. Brother, you call on Allah with certainty, with certainty. So the author, he says, fi uh, sahih عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال لا يقولن أحدكم اللهم اغفر لي إن شئت اللهم ارحم لي إن شئت ليعزم المسألة فإن الله لا مكره له ولمسلم وليعظم الرقبة فإن الله لا يتعظمه شيء أعطاه So the author he mentioned in الصحيح Again in صحيح البخاري uh, and in Muslim. From the hadith of Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, one of you should not say, Oh Allah, forgive me if you will. Oh Allah, show me mercy if you will. And وَلِيَعْزِمَ الْمَسْأَلَةِ And he should be certain. And uh, he should be certain and have strong and high hopes with regards to his supplication. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا مُكْرِهَ لَا Because indeed, Allah, he has no one to coerce him. He has no one to coerce him. And no one can force Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do something that he did not want to do. That he did not want to do. Somebody may say, for example, to a, a person, he needs uh, some money. Can you loan me a hundred dollars? Yani, if you like, if you like, or if you're able to, if, you're li if you like, in shi'ta, if you like, if you're able to, you can, can you loan me a hundred dollars? Meaning, you know, if not, I'm not forcing you. I'm not forcing you like this. Or sometimes you maybe say, you know, if you like, will you do this or you do that? Or if you can, 
Is it possible like this? Because maybe they won't do it. Maybe they won't do it. Maybe they won't loan you. So you tell them, you know, I'm not forcing you, but if you can, or if you will, loan me a hundred dollars. As for Allah, no one can force him to do anything. No one can force him to do anything. And likewise, sometimes maybe somebody, he will give something to somebody. He will give something to somebody, but he will do that and he doesn't want to. He will do that and he doesn't like to. He does that, yani kari. He dislikes to do that. Maybe somebody uh, asked him for something and, and he doesn't want to give them anything. But he's afraid if he doesn't give them something then they might harm him or they might lie on him or they might cheat him. Or he wants something from them. He, 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 so he, he doesn't want to give them but he hopes that if he gives them some, some other thing will happen or come out by way of that in the life like this. And he, so sometimes a person he will give somebody something. He will help somebody. He will give them money or he will give them charity or he'll do something for them and he does not want to. But he does it for a reason, either because he's afraid or either because uh, he's scared or because he needs something from them and the likes like that or is hoping for something from them. So he'll do it anyways. He doesn't want to take them to this place. He doesn't want to do this. He doesn't want to do that. Whatever the case may be, but he'll do it anyways. And he like he's coerced or almost forced to, afraid that if he didn't do it, then this may happen or that may happen and the likes like this. As for Allah Azza wa Jal, no one can force him and he does not do anything he does not like. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever he decrees and whatever he wills, it occurs in a manner pleasing to him and that which he, ha and that which he likes. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whenever he decrees decree something, it occurs. Whenever he decrees something, it occurs. So then a, a person, he will not say that. Also, it would not uh, be considered too, too, too big. For example, sometimes maybe if somebody said to you, brother, can I borrow $100? Maybe you think about it. Any? But if he said to you, brother, can I borrow $100,000? That's a major request. That's way different than somebody came to you and said, can I borrow $100? That's adi, normal, yani in society. Can I borrow $100? But if somebody said, can I borrow $100,000? You're like, whoa. And you will find this to be something major. The one asking and the one being asked. But whoa, that's a lot of money. So then the one who's any ask, asking, you're asking him for a lot of money. So he's going to be like, oh, $100, maybe I can give you, but $100,000? Even if he had $100,000, he would think, whoa, whoa, that's a lot of money to ask, to ask for. As for with Allah, nothing is big. Nothing is too big for him to give. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing is too big for him to give. And he's not, it's not considered too much yani, to, to ask for from Allah. He has the keys to the heavens and the earth. And yani, the treasures of the heavens and the earth, of the kingdom of the heavens and the earth. Allah Azza wa Jal, he has yani, uh, the dominion in his hand. So nothing is considered too big with Allah that, that, you, ask for, that you ask him in this manner like this. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَتَعَظَمُهُ شَيْءٍ لَا يَتَعَظَمُهُ شَيْءٌ أَعْطَاهُ So this is also from the, the meanings that, that's there. Also if a person, he said, Oh Allah, forgive me if you want to. Forgive me if you will. It's like a person, he, he's like, he, he doesn't even, uh, he's not even really in need. It's like he's not even really in need, like he can do without it. If somebody said, you know what, if you can, loan me $100. If not, you know, it's all good, I don't need it. Huh? That's, that, that, that's, that might not be the words that are said, but sometimes this is what is understood. You know, you loan me $100. If, if you got it, you can loan me $100 if it's okay, like that. And he meaning like if you don't do it, I'm not forcing you. Also, if you don't do this, I'll be all right. It's all good. Like, but you don't come to Allah. Oh Allah, forgive me if you want. And if you don't want to, I'm all good. A'udhu Billah. A'udhu Billah. That meaning is there. That meaning is, oh Allah, give me this if you want. In shitta. In shitta, provide me with a righteous wife. In shitta, provide me with, with, with a righteous son. In shitta, enter me into paradise. A'udhu Billah. And then if not, you know, it's like it has that meaning there. So this is also from the aspect. So all of those terms that have lawazim baqida or fasida that could be understood uh, that would lead to having a bad understanding even if the person didn't intend that to avoid these affairs to avoid these affairs having good manners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to having good manners uh, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so it has that meaning like you know he doesn't need it or the person is back and forth he's not uh, certain he's hesitant uh, he's hesitant about that. He's hesitant about that. There are some exceptions that people of knowledge they mention, and that is if a person is asking for some good of this life, that in general is good, 
but he doesn't know if it's specifically good for him. If it's specifically good for him. For example, a specific woman. He wants to get married to a specific woman. And he, and, and he thinks in his mind what he has or his research, it seems to be good. But he's not sure if it's good or not. So then he could say in this circumstance, Oh Allah, uh, facilitate for me to marry so-and-so, the daughter of so-and-so, if you will. If you will. Uh, meaning if it's good for me. And in this particular woman, this particular woman, if you will. And now you can mention the, the Mashia of Allah Azza wa Jal. You can make the ta'liq. Because a person, he may want to marry this woman, but it might not be good for him. And from that is the meaning of, of al-istikhara. Likewise, dua al-istikhara. That if it's good for me, then facilitate for me, make it easy for me, and bring it close to me. And if it's not good for me, then take it away from me and distance me from that and distance that from me. We understand the istikhara, so this has the same meaning. So if it's something from the good of this life, that's in general is good, but a person, he's not certain is it good for him. One, he can say now, oh Allah, provide this thing for me, if you will. Meaning, if it's good for me, provide it for me. Likewise, the supplication of the Prophet, Allahumma ihyini ma alimt al-hayata khayran li, wa tawaffani idha alimt al-wafata khayran li. Oh Allah, cause me to, lie, to live, so long as you know that living is good for me. And cause me to die if you know that uh, my death is good for me. Yeah, I need to put this issue here because a believer, he doesn't know. Is living good for him or is death good for him? So to put that to the Mashiach of Allah and, and now, and to entrust that to Allah, this is allowed. This is allowed. So likewise, if a person, he wanted to, to, uh, to, do, to do this thing in the worldly life that appears to be good, but he's not certain if it's good for him. We understand that aspect like getting married or getting a job. Oh Allah, help me get this job, insha'Allah, in shitta, if you will. Meaning, if you know that it's good for me, give me the job. If it's not good for me, then, then uh, turn me away, away from that. So this is also the meaning in istikhara. So that was an exception to that issue. So the author, he says, فِيهِ مَسَائِلَ الْأُولَىٰ أَنَّهِيُ عَنَ الْإِسْتِثْنَاءِ فِي الدُّعَىٰ The first uh, issue here is the prohibition of making an exception and supplication. What is intended by istithna here is to say, insha'Allah. Insha'Allah. You don't say this whenever you make dua. You don't say this about yourself or not for your brother. Barakallah feek, insha'Allah. Some people, they say that on accident because they're used to saying insha'Allah, but you don't say that. Rahimakallah, insha'Allah. May Allah give you a righteous wife, insha'Allah. No, you just say, may Allah give you a righteous life, a, a, a righteous wife. May Allah have mercy on you. May Allah bless you. May, you don't say, Ghafar Allah lak, insha'Allah. May Allah forg forgive you. Insha'Allah, you don't, you don't say insha'Allah here. Insha'Allah means if, if Allah wills. So here you have high hopes and strong faith in Allah, that Allah will forgive him, that Allah have mercy on him, that Allah will provide him. So here you say, Ghafar Allah lak, Rahimak Allah, Allah yuhamuk. Like this, you make the dua straight. Oh Allah have mercy on you, may Allah forgive you. Like this, you make the dua straight, may Allah bless you. You don't couple it with the Mashia, insha'Allah. You understand that? Uh, this is also from those manners. This is from those manners. This is what is intended here. You don't say, insha'Allah, whenever you make dua. Not for yourself or not for anybody else. Not for yourself and not for anybody else. Rather, you just make dua for them with certain faith and strong hope in Allah. The, the second issue here is the clarification of the reason why. And yani the, the, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا مُكْرِهَا لَهِ Because there's uh, Allah, He has no one to coerce Him or to force Him. No one can make Him do something He did not want to do or did not like to do, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore we do not say that. And likewise, nothing is too major or too great with Allah azza wa that He will not respond because of how great it is, because of how major it is. And likewise, the other reasons that we have mentioned, likewise, that it has the meaning of uh, that a person he's not in need uh, of the uh, of the thing he's asking for, or that he can do without it, or that he's not sh he's not certain he's hesitant whether he wants it or needs it or not, and the likes like this. So all of these meanings here uh, are from the reasons why it's perm impermissible. And the third issue, the third issue is the statement, and that he should make. The, he should emphasize his supplication and be certain with that. Uh, Al-Azim is uh, 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 ta'kid. 
taqid al shay that he would be he would emphasize that and he would be certain with regards to that he would ask in this manner ar rabia ya azam wa raghba ya azam ar raghba the fourth one is that a person he would uh, have strong strong hope he would he would uh, he would have strong hope make his hope and desire uh, for the thing he's asking for and for Allah to respond to him he'll make it strong in his heart meaning he would he will persist in supplicating. He will call on Allah over and over and he will break down before him while he's asking and beg him time after time, over and over, uh, begging Allah Azza wa This is what it means, Ya Adham al that you ask him for everything, subhanahu wa ta'ala. You ask him for everything and you have certainty when you're asking him and you beg him time in and time out and you do not give up. You do not say, uh, I, I made dua. Somebody, I, I made dua. Say, so, well, so, well, he would say, Well, I made dua. And he still didn't have it. Is, huh? is opposite of that. Opposite of that, yes. The opposite of that. Yeah, to, to not give up. Yes, to make your hope strong and great. Very strong. Very strong. Uh, very, very strong. To never give up hope, to never give up faith. And uh, to persist and to consist. al it means to to be persistent, to be consistent, to time in over and over and over and over, to never stop. Al-Khamisa, al-Ta'adilu li hadha al-Amr. Al-Khamisa, al-Ta'adil li hadha al-Amr. The fifth issue here is the reason, the mention of the reason uh, for this uh, affair, the reason for this affair. And why he will not do that. Why he will, he will not do that. After this, the author he says, "Babun la yaqulu abdi wa amati." The chapter with regards to that one, he will not say, "My slave, my male slave, or my female slave." And yani if a person he actually owned an individual, and yani in the time uh, before the uh, in the time of the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and also after that, in the time of the Islamic conquest. There are slaves. Uh, there were slaves. So a person, he would be a, a slave, meaning he would be owned by someone else. So if that was the case, it would not say to him, my slave, my abdi, wa amati. Abdi means a slave. Wa ama is a slave, a female slave. So a person, he would not say it like this. He would not say it like this. So the author, he says, وَفِي الصَّحِيحِ عَنْ أَبِي هُرَيْوَةَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ عَنَّ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَمَ قَالَ لا تقول أحدكم أطعم ربك وضع ربك وليقول سيدي ومولاي ولا يقول أحدكم عبدي وعمتي وليقول فتايا وفتاتي وغلامي So also in uh, Sahih again in Sahih Bukhari and Muslim from the Hadith of Abi Hurairah رضي الله عنه the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم he said that one of you should not say feed your Lord or give 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 the wudu for your word for for your Lord for your for your lord and rather he should say for uh, my master uh, sayyidi wa mawlaya both of them yani my, my master like this and one of you should not say my slave my male slave or my female slave abdi my male slave or my female slave abdi aw amati wa amati and he should say fataya wa fatati wa ghulami my my boy uh, and, and the likes like this my boy my girl my young boy, like this, these words will be used instead of abdi. Because all of the slaves, they are abidun lillahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it has a, a, a meaning, it, ha, it has a bad meaning, like the person he's sharing with the rububiyah of Allah Azza wa Jalla. Allah, he is the Lord, and we're all slaves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are all slaves to, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So for someone to say, and he feed your Lord, and he, but he's meaning his master. And he, he says that to his slave. Somebody here has a slave. And he tells his slave to feed your owner. And he, like, like this, bring the food. But he says it in the, in the Arabic language like this. Uh, like this, it has a bad meaning. It has a bad meaning. Allah, he is the Rabb. Allah, he is, he is the Rabb. So it has a, the, the share, the meaning. And the words are being shared here. So this must be avoided. This must be avoided here, so that meaning is not present. 
give the wudu for your for your Lord. Isqi rabbak. Yani give your Lord some drink. Go get some drink for your Lord. Yani that. The Rabb, he's the master. Naam, Rabbu dar the owner of the house. What is meant here? Malik. Malik. Isqi malikak. Like, like this. Now, this is what is intended. But because the words, they have this, this bad meaning, they're not allowed. They're not allowed. So instead of that, one will use another word, Sayyid, or Maw, so Sayyidi, or Mulaya. And instead of calling them my slave, Abdi, wa Amati, we'll call them Fataya, wa Fatati, wa Gulami. Like this, all of this again, observing this, these terms and uh, avoiding having these bad meanings with regards with regards to uh, with regards to the creed and the terms that one uses with regards to the creed and the terms that that one uses so slavery uh, in Islam is not something like what is understood today that people are taken unlawfully there's only one way there's only one way to uh, to fall into slavery and there are many ways that are encouraged to get out of it there's only one way for a person to become a slave and there are many ways for a person to be removed from slavery. So in Islam, the only way a person can become a slave is if the, the Muslims under the Muslim ruler and the Muslim army, not what we see today, individuals saying he's a Muslim Khalifa and then they're going around causing chaos and shedding blood unlawfully and saying jihad and then saying these are my slaves. And the lies like, oh, this is false. With people doing the, this, this ignorance and this foolishness but uh, whenever there is a Muslim army and there is a Muslim ruler and uh, they, they go to war with the enemies of Al Islam, those, 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 enemies, they, uh, those enemies, they refuse to accept Islam and, uh, or refuse to, to accept the jizya. And if they're from the people of the book, if they fight and the, the Muslims, they conquer their lands, then their women and children will become slaves then their women and children will become slaves for the Muslims. And this is from the bounties of war. And then it's encouraged for them uh, to, to set them free. But even then, uh, the, as slaves, the legislation requires for that they be treated in uh, the most noble and the best manner. And this happened in the conquest of Islam in the time of Umar, radiallahu anhu, whenever Islam conquered the Iraq and Iran and conquered all the way to Al-Maghrib, Many of those people who their lands were conquered and they became slaves, they became from the best of the tabi'in. They became from the best of the tabi'in. So therefore it was a mercy for them. It was a mercy for them. Uh, Muhammad ibn Sirin, from the greatest of the scholars of hadith of the tabi'in, his father Sirin, he, he was in Iraq and he, he was in a church reading the, the Injil. And then the, Islam, the, the, the Islamic army, they came there and they, and they overpowered that army and they conquered that land and they established the Islamic, the Islamic rule. And then Sirin, he became a slave. And then he accepted Islam and slavery. And then he set free. And then he named his child Muhammad and Anas and Hafsa. <laughs> and all names of the companions, and names of the Prophet So the slavery for him was a mercy and a blessing. And then from his children, Muhammad, he's from the greatest of scholars of hadith. The very first of the narrators of hadith to criticize the other narrators and to tell them where you get that narration from, who you heard that from. That's not true. He's lying. He's lying on the Prophet. He was from the first to, to, to establish this issue here, him and his shabi. Rahimahumullah. So the point is, he was a slave. al he was a slave. Hassan al-Basri, he was a slave. They were, they, these people, they were slaves, but then from slavery, they were raised to be the best of mankind. The best of mankind. One time, Umar, he met, uh, Ibn, he met, uh, he met Nafi, Ibn Abdul Harith, in Usfan. And he had left Nafi in charge of Mecca. Umar, radiallahu anhu, he, he met Nafi in charge of Mecca. And then there's a place between Medina and Mecca called Usfan. Omar was there, and then Nafi he showed up there. He said, "What do you?" He said, "Who did you leave in charge uh, of Mecca?" He said, "Ibn Abza." He said, "Well, ma Abza, ma Ibn Abza. Who was Ibn Abza?" He said, "Mola min Mawalina. He's a, he said he's a freed slave from our slaves. He, he said he said he's, you left a freed slave in charge of Mecca, and he said, "Amir al-Mu'minin, verily he he he, he is uh, Hafiz al uh, he, he is half of the Kitab Allah. 
Alimun bil fara'id, qadin. And he's a memorizer of the book of Allah. And he is knowledgeable of the Islamic laws and rights. And he's a judge. <laughs> and he's a judge. And Omar, he says, Amma wallahi, inni qala nabiyyukum sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, inna allaha yarfa'u bihad al-kitabi akwaman wa yabaw akharin. That verily I swear by Allah, your Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that indeed Allah, he will raise by, uh, he will raise people by way of this book and lower others. And lower others. So this is the point here. The point is, in Islam, slavery is legislated. And there's wisdom behind that. And it's a beautiful manner. Anyone ever is performed properly. And it's not like a person who just go snap somebody off the, off the streets or go, go to this country and these people have a different color. Okay, they're slaves. Or these people, that. It's in this manner. Those people who refuse to, bound to, 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 to surrender and to submit to the Islamic law uh, at the hands of the Islamic ruler. Then they will uh, be captured, and they will be put in slavery, and then they will be taught, and they will be encouraged to accept Islam, and, it, and, and then also it's encouraged to, to free them. Shamkiti uh, rahimahullah, in his tafsir, he mentioned uh, uh, the issue uh, of ariq, and he spoke about it in, in much detail, and mentioned many great benefits and wisdoms behind the legislation of that. Behind the legislation of that. In this chapter, there are issues. The first one is the prohibition of saying, My slave, uh, my male or my female slave. That, the second one is the person he will not say, uh, My Lord, to a person. Yani my, my Lord. And he will not say, Likewise, feed your Lord. And he's speaking about Yani himself. So the third and the fourth one is that uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he taught words that will be in place of that. Instead of saying my slave, he will say fataya wa fatati wa gulami. Instead of saying my lord, he will say sayyidi wa mulaya. Khamisa tanbihu lil murad wa tahkiku tawheed. Hatta fil al And uh, the fifth issue here is to uh, draw attention to the intent from that. And that is to actualize the rights of a tawheed to fulfill them even in the terms. Meaning that a person who will be far away from shirk and from any foul and lowly meanings in, in the creed. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will be revered and honored and respected. And every aspect that has a foul meaning from the terms and the statement should be avoided. And Allah knows best. Hada wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.